Good morning, Monticello Christian Church family. Welcome to our online worship service. I'm so glad that you've joined us in worship this morning. A uh, reminder that our annual congregational meeting is coming up soon. It will be Saturday and Sunday, November the 18th and November the 19th, before and after our services then. The informational meeting regarding our annual congregational meeting will be November the 15th, that's a Wednesday, at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. All participating members are encouraged to be in attendance so that they might cast their vote towards next year's officers and budget. Let's begin our time together with a word of prayer. Oh, through the week of stress and demands, we come to you this day, O oh Lord. We ask that you would awaken us again to your comfort and to your loving presence in our life and help us to be open to the many ways in which you've called us and sustain us. Make us ready to be of your service in Jesus' name. Amen. And now a special presentation in observance of Veterans Day of the Star Spangled Banner and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. now cast our cares before the Lord on behalf of ourselves and those that we know. Mighty God, we are grateful that you have welcomed us here into your arms as your children, that by grace through faith we are forgiven. We are grateful that there is reconciliation with you and the fruit of this reconciliation is found amongst us in the reconciling of one to another in fellowship. We are grateful for the inheritance in peace and in justice that is ours, that is in our hands to pass it on as well. We pray for those for whom this is a time of pain and loss, for those whom painful memories become fresh, for those far from loved ones, for those who have loved ones who wait for them. We pray for those who are in the many places in the world that are far from peaceful. Lord Jesus, within those experience, it, it is to share, within, within whose experience it is to share in the daily life of human community, strengthen those for whom everyday things are a struggle for whom feeding their children does not come easy, for whom finding work seems a lost cause, for whom having a secure roof over their heads would be a dream come true. Today, Lord, we lift to you those on our church prayer list, those who are on our hearts as well as ourselves in the silence of our hearts now. Lord Christ, glorious beyond imagining, surrounded by hallowed ones gathered into the perfection of your presence, unite our prayers and praises with theirs that every generation may exalt you. In Jesus' name we pray, for it was he who taught us to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Rejoice, Christ our Lord has granted us peace by his grace. Let us now offer one to another signs and words of peace. And may the peace of God be always with you. Amen.
night before his betrayal, Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room to share a meal with them. And Jesus Christ, taking the loaf of bread and giving thanks to God for it, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you, and as often as you shall eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. He then took the cup, gave thanks to God for it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, which is shed for you. And as often as you shall drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. These elements of communion convey a sacred message to us, as Jesus pointed out when he instituted this meal with his disciples. Through these symbols, says Paul, we proclaim the Lord's death until his return, the day when every eye shall see the Lord. Let us proclaim with our lives and in our remembrance the greatness of Christ's salvation for us all. Blessing upon blessing has been given to us through the Lord's great bounty. Now we return these gifts unto the giver of all good gifts. And may the Lord bless these gifts and the lives that they represent and cause them to the work of the Lord in this world, which God has given unto us. Let us ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name as we bring our offerings into his courts. Amen. Scripture passage this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, arm yourselves also with the same attitude, because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. For you've spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. They are surprised that you do not join them in their reckless, wild living, and they heap abuse on you. But they will have to give account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this is the reason the gospel was preached, even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body. But live according to God in regard to the Spirit. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind, so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each one of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. <clears throat> we hear these sort of things uh, as we consider stewardship, we, we hear that if we are to serve the Lord, if we are to desire a, a, 
a place in, in what God's doing in the world, that, that we should use the gifts that we have been given. That if one is granted a gift of, of being able to be hospitable or show mercy or anything like that, that we should do so with zeal and with all the strength that we have. And perhaps in your mind, when you hear things like that, you go, well, I don't have a gift. God hasn't gifted me with any gift. I'm no good at anything. But the word declares that indeed you do, that we all have opportunities to serve and that God has equipped us to do those things. Perhaps our, our minds have gone in another direction and we have seen uh, that we have a gift and we're well aware of it. And we think, well, this is mine. I have honed my talent I have honed my gift. I'm able to do this well. And so it's for me. It's for my own enjoyment or for my own entertainment. I would hope that we yield in the other direction far more into the mind of that God is the giver of this gift, this talent, and has provided us the ability to serve him. And that we should do so again with zeal, with the strength and with an awareness that God is, is working through us in these ways. We, perhaps in regards to gifts, in regards to ways that we serve, we have been uh, in the in a midst of, uh, of some place or in the church or in, in, in another way. And we, we consider whose job is this? We see something that needs to do and we say, whose job is this? Who's, whose task is this to make sure this is done? If, so, if, we're, if we're there and we see and consider in our, in our minds, why is no one doing this? Why isn't this happening? Perhaps this is an opportunity that God is calling us to that when we see a need that we can fill it. There is many who, who deserve a, a, a thank you in service to the church. But particularly in this weekend, on our minds and in our service, we are considering those in our local community who served our nation. And they deserve a thank you as well as we are, are here on Veterans Day weekend. Uh, we are, are saying thanks to the veterans who have protected our freedom. Now, our lesson today is titled Tags, which means talents, abilities, gifts, and service. Now, dog tags bear a soldier's identifying information. Soldiers are, are, are marked and then identified uh, um, by these tags and the soldiers themselves are marked and identified by their service. The ways in which they've served and the variety of ways that they, on our behalf, have gone and, and are now veterans that we're able to celebrate and thank. Now our service to the Lord and to, the, to our church is marked by different tags, T-A-G-S, talents, uh, abilities, Gifts They identify us as well with Christ and with his church. Their service, our veterans, it was drawn from a place of love for country. It was drawn from a place of its free people. May we also serve in such a way. We've seen in our Bible study this week, just this past Wednesday, from Romans chapter 12, a way of illustrating how God, the gifts are to be used in our churches, amongst our people, in the life of believers. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. Our service must come from a place of love as well. Because it means nothing. It means nothing if it's not for love. I, I don't want to have to start singing in the name of love. We have to know and understand that our service and the offering of our gifts shouldn't be something, again, that we mark off a checklist. But that we serve God and his people out of love. 1 Corinthians 13, often called the love chapter, 
If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love for God, love for others, a hatred of sin, humility, these my friends, are the tools of ministry. Ministry, indeed, that, that I want to see that this is you. This is directed at you, not those who are in our churches, who are in points of leadership, who have titles and elders or pastors or, or anything like that. But all of us, most definitely them, but all of us are called into ministry. That, that in big ways, great ways, mighty ways, history-changing ways, world-changing ways, and in very small ways that in their own way are history-changing, world-changing, community-changing, transformative ways we are called into ministry. God equips us to do that, validates us, commissions us to do that. Louis Blau, who is an evangelist and, and missionary and has has spent a great deal of time proclaiming God's word, says this, God isn't impressed in the least by job title, bank account, or standing in the community. God is searching for a servant's heart. God isn't a respecter of persons. That if we gather before the Lord and one of us flashes a, a, an identification card of CEO in a in a Fortune 500 company that God says, oh, well, there's, there's someone. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to entreat with you and speak with you. You folks are just going to have to wait. We see through God's word that what God values is our hearts. And may we seek to serve the Lord. That, that here at Monticello Christian Church, there are, are evidences of, of servanthood everywhere. And, and places in which you can use your gifts and talents that, that if you uh, love kids, you love teaching, uh, you, you can serve in Sunday school. You can serve in the kids' ministry. You can serve in adult Sunday school. You can start a class. That you can, uh, if you have a gift in, in enjoying landscaping and being outside and tending of, of plants and flowers and things, well, there's, we have flower beds and, and uh, opportunities to keep our campus beautiful. That if you enjoy cooking, last uh, the, the, this last Wednesday, we had our all-church Thanksgiving meal, and it was delicious, and it was incredible because we had this great opportunity for fellowship, and there's opportunities to use that gift and talent for the Lord in our church. What about music? If you love to sing, we have a choir, we have a praise team. If you love to play music, then there is this accompaniment that you can bring to the worship of the Lord in our midst. If you have a talent for handiwork, well, all during the week, there's things that you can come to Monticello Christian Church and do to, to fix things up or, or, or fix doorknobs or put in lights or, or, or do all these different things in service of God's people here. If you have a talent for art, I have uh, things in my office and in my home that our church members have made. I have a candy dish made of glass. It's beautiful. It's one of the treasures I have in my office. And, and, and so there is a gift that can add to the inspiration and the encouragement of God's people here. That, that if, you, if God has blessed you financially, then you can offer support. You can offer support also in moral support. You can encourage the staff the daycare, the members, the, the people who are serving in all of these other roles who are serving out of talents and gifts and, and provide them moral support. Most of all, you can provide prayer support. You can storm the heavens on behalf of what God is doing here at Monticello Christian Church. Not only so, perhaps there is ways in our community or in your community that you can use these talents that God have, has given you, these gifts 
that, that going to a hospital, a library, or a food bank and, and utilizing your efforts to support them, not only, not only so, but also in the ways that I've mentioned before that are at a local church level are also at a community level of cooking and music and handiwork and art. What about theological teaching? What about serving in a Bible study or, or, or using the knowledge that you have pursued because you enjoy feasting on the word? Or also, and, and we have some in our church and in our community as well, people who, who serve in educational teaching as well. That, that helping people elevate themselves in their educational pursuits. You see, Matthew 5, 16 says this. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let his light shine for all to see in you. That, that you are serving and loving and caring and doing in a community, in a church, in your homes. And God is receiving glory and praise from it because it's evident who you're laboring for. And you say, okay, that's all well and good. That's all fine. But what is, how do I do this? How can, do I go about using my gifts? What are the practical steps, Rev Benji? Well, I, as you know, preachers, we love alliteration. So I'm going to give you three P's to remember. First, pray. First and foremost, you need to pray and, and talk to God about what the Lord is preparing you for. And, and consider that you are entering into this not for yourself, not for ourselves, but for the Lord. Second, pay attention. Be very mindful and aware going forward after you've resolved in your heart, Lord, I want to use these tags, talents, abilities, gifts, service. Pay attention to others, how they are uh, responding to you and, and telling you about things that, that you are doing and excelling in and, and, and seem to be enjoying. Also, pay attention to your own interests. I've, I've not often seen, though it does happen occasionally, I, I most often see people already loving and enjoying something, yet they can go and take a step forward and use it for the Lord. So pray, pay attention to others, pay attention to your own interest. Also, practice music. There are, there are some incredible people who use their musical talents here at church, and they practice. There are those who use their skills in business or in handicraft or in the technical uh, aspects of things, and they've had a, a lot of time to practice that, and they've become very good at it, and they can serve the church, serve the community, serve others in our community. Praise God. Praise God that we have a purpose, that, that we have a God that has a plan for us, for all of us, and that we're going to make it, that, that, that this is not happenstance, but God is sovereign, and that calls us to be a part of this plan in the way that we serve and love and do his will in the world. To God be glory. This day and always for all these incredible things that that we have been granted for the provision and that we have been given the opportunity to be good stewards of all the Lord has blessed us with. May he be praised now and always today, tomorrow and forever in our life by what we say, by what we do and what our lives represent.
Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.